Hi there, and welcome to a follow-up on the uh, presentation of the Renko tools. In this uh, video, I'll show you how to use this with the Bloodhound from uh, Shark Indicators. So let's uh, just dive into a chart here. This is a uh, Renko chart from uh, the NASDAQ futures contract. We have a Renko setting of uh, 10 for trending bars and 20 for reversal bars. So we need uh, 10 ticks for a continuation bar and 20 ticks from the close of the prior bar in order to create a reversal bar. And um, let's just go ahead here and uh, add the Renko tools and Bloodhound. And then we'll start working with this. Uh, for plots here, I will have the swing dots and the swing labels. I will show the reversal signals as well. And for now, the paint bars will show the major trend. I think the easiest uh, place to start is uh, just by going with the uh, reversal bars here. We'll use a uh, indicator comparison solver to identify those. Reversal bar signal. So you just go in here and you grab the Renko tools. And towards the bottom, there is a data series for bullish signals and bearish signals. And if you compare that with a fixed value, you'll be able to identify those. It's a positive one for both long and short signals. And so we'll see here those bar be, bars being identified by the Bloodhound racing stripes. Now for this uh, reversal signal here, we probably want to eliminate that. We want to take reversal bars going in the direction of the major trend. And so we can add the major trend by simply copying this and exchanging the data series that we're calling making a slight modification as well to the data output. So major trend here, and then it's a negative one for the downtrend. So we'll have to make that modification as well. Add a AND logic node and connect the major trend to that along with the reversal bar signals. Now we have only the reversal bars that align with the major trend being identified. All right, and then uh, I want to also go over the market depth and market speed feature. Can uh, go in here and make uh, a modification to the paint bar output showing the market depth paint bars. So these are now showing bars that have a skipped level. You see here that the Renko high level was um, skipped. So by identifying those bars, <clears throat> you will uh, be able to see markets that uh, might be illiquid or thin. There's a lot of, uh, of these bars on here. So you might want to adjust the sensitivity. So uh, if we set this to three skip levels instead, we'll see less output on these. And um, you'll have to make that adjustment, of course, in Bloodhound when uh, you set that up. So we can just uh, copy this again and uh, define this as market depth. Again, go in and make the adjustment that we just uh, did in the chart, skipped levels. So we define that as three. The data series is again towards the bottom here. And these bars are or the normal scenario is uh, identified as a zero. So we want to enter the market or be in the market or manage our trades when we have 
normal market conditions. So that's what we're looking to define here, not generate signals on these abnormal bars. So in order to do that, we need to turn this uh, solver around. We can use a function node for that. And now we see that these uh, bars have been excluded for output. And maybe we also want to extend this signal a little bit forward. So we can use a uh, extension node for that. And move that signal forward a little bit. Let's say two bars. And now we will only enter bars where we have seen a return to normalcy in the market. So these bars here would be excluded from output. You can do the same with uh, the market speed. So the market speed again is uh, referring to the aggregate latency. Uh, make the adjustment here on the paint bars. So we'll be able to identify those. Take off the uh, Bloodhound output here and There was a situation here when the market was moving very fast in this um, down move. And uh, you probably don't want to add to your slippage cost entering or managing trades uh, in those scenarios. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and look at uh, that scenario. Again, grab the appropriate data series. That will be defined as a positive one for these. And so we have isolated these bars here, but we actually do not want output on those. So we'll uh, do the same as we did for the market depth. We'll have a inverter as well as a extender. I think we set this to two bars. We'll do the same with this. And now we have moved the signal for this one two bars forward and we'll enter a normal scenario again uh, down here. Okay, so uh, that is uh, it for the um, blood on introduction. Just want to quickly show you that you can also adjust the uh, aggregate uh, latency setting here. It's set to 80 milliseconds. So you can move that up or down depending on your location. All right, so uh, in the uh, next uh, presentation, I'll uh, show you how to uh, use this with uh, Blackbird from Shark Indicators. Stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out at uh, the contact form over at Lizard Indicators or drop me a line at info at lizardindicators.com. Looking forward to hearing from you. Until then, take care and bye-bye.